I'm going to be reading Making 13 Colonies by Joy Hackham, History of Us. I'm going to be reading Chapter 1. Sign in the Sky. In 1607, a dazzling comet lit the sky over Europe. A comet! A comet! People cried and pointed to the heavens. In those days, almost everyone could name the brightest stars and planets. They knew the constellations and the mythical stories of their forming. Mothers and fathers showed their children the stars named for the dog Cyrus, or Draco the Dragon, or Cygnus the Swan. Pollution of city lights did not yet dim the sky, nor was there much else in the evening to capture attention. Few could afford costly candles. So when someone out of the ordinary appeared in the night sky, people saw it and wondered at its meaning. These were times when most questions were answered by religion, religious faith or superstition. Modern science was just being born. Stars were thought to be the lights of heaven. And comets were said to be the messages sent to foretell danger and dire change. Many who watched the bold comet were frightened. They might have been even more fearful had they known this was very common that has been seen in 16, 1066 when the Norman kings invaded England from France. Those French conquerors have changed England and the English language for all time. Yeah, that was true. There was a battle. Yeah, that's a long story by the Normans and the English. But you don't need a comment in 1607 to see that Europe was changing. The old religion, Catholic Christianity, has been broken apart. England has now become Protestant, then Catholic, then Protestant again. Now some people called Puritans were saying that the country wasn't Protestant enough. It was all very disturbing to the people who used to secure faith. To make matters worse, there were economic problems too. In the Greek Catholic nation of Spain, the government was bankrupt. Although no one knew it, Spain's glory days were over. Would that arrogant little Protestant island that England become Europe's new leader? Now that England's man- magnificent Queen Elizabeth was dead, dead, no one knew where England was heading. In this world, it once seemed orderly. Ideas were changing. New thinkers like the Italian scientist Galileo Galilei were actually saying that Aristo was the greatest of scientists. Some ideas that they were wrong. Galileo even whispered that Nicholas Copernicus might have been right. Copernicus, a Polish astronomer, had said the sun, not the earth, was the center of the universe. How could that be? Everyone knew that planets and stars and sun were revolved around the earth. That idea was wrong, the Pope and all the Europe rulers were wrong. Of course, that's, that disturbing idea got Galileo in a lot of trouble, trouble ending up changing every pa- everything power believed. Change is troublesome, especially those in power. And yet, the new ideas like germs seem to travel on invisible wings. The, the, the epidemic thought was soon out of t- control. In 1609, just two years after the comet appeared, Galileo built one of the world's first telescopes. It was a lot stronger and it was, it was therefore more useful than the few people made it before. Galileo took much of the mystery from the skies and replaced it with a scientific order. When the comet of 1607 came again, in 1682, an English scientist named Edmund Haley tracked it and learned it that it takes more than 75 years to complete this trip around the sun. Haley predicted that the comet would return in 1758, and he was right. But in 1607, people knew none of that. They did not know the year 1607 was to become famous. That very year, the seeds of a new nation, a new way of governing, a new way of looking at the world, were being planted on the North American continent by a small group of English men and boys. The message that some people read in their comment was right. The world was in for astonishing changes. Would they be changed for the better, not for the people called Indians who were soon meet the pale-skinned English? For those changes, for them, the changes were tragic. 
But for England and rest of the world, 6-7 marked the beginning of what turned out to be an awesome, momentous, art-shaking experiment. An experiment that will lead to democracy and the government de- dedicated to liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Let's watch the United States happen. Take yourself to the beginning of the 17th century to England, where some brave men are getting ready to travel to a place where they call the New World. They have no idea what is ahead of them. They bring another along with their old world ideas, good and bad. Pack a bag. We're going to join them. Okay. You don't need Galileo's telescope to see Halley's Comet. It's, all, it's the only comet that passes close enough to or it can be seen easily with the naked eye. It's been over, observed 30 times since 40, 467 BCE. Above, Halley's orbit through our solar system at the far end of the planet. Uh, the comet will be goes outside the orbit of Neptune. It will be back in 2061. And yes. Okay, thank you.